today I'm going to show you how to repot an orchid. Now there are two types of orchids. There are some orchids that grow in the ground and you would grow these outside in your garden. Those are not the ones we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about epiphytes. These are orchids that grow on trees and these are the ones that are sold for house plants. So if you buy a plant like this at your local nursery or garden center, uh, it's almost certainly be an epiphyte. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Now to understand how and why to repot, it's very useful to have a look at how these grow in nature. This is a picture of an orchid growing on a tree branch. You can see the roots going along the creases inside the bark. And if you look at this, you can see that this is going to be a pretty dry environment. When it rains, water will go on the roots, then the sun comes out and it dries right up. Most of the time, the roots are surrounded by air. Now, they may grow in very humid air, but still air is a big part of growing this orchid. Why should you repot an orchid? Well, in the home, orchids grow in pots. And inside the pot, we usually have some sort of a chunky material. It could be uh, bark chunks or things like cocoa husk. And some people even grow in sphagnum moss. That material is really good because it allows lots of air to get to the roots. But over time, that material breaks down and small pieces break off. Two things happen. One is there's less air in the pot. The second thing is that the material in there stays wetter longer. And that's not good for orchid roots. If they stay too wet, they start to rot and the orchid will die. So a rule of thumb is to repot an orchid every two years, no matter what. If you follow that rule, you won't kill an orchid by having too much water in your pot. Now there are a couple other reasons why you might want to repot. And one is the buildup of salts. So orchids are very sensitive to salt. As you water, the water evaporates and that leaves behind a white salt deposit. That's what you see inside your kettle. You also fertilize orchids and that fertilizer is also a salt. And as the salt builds up in the pot, it starts damaging the orchid. Again, if you repot every two years, you won't have a salt problem. Third reason for repotting is sphagnum moss. I find that a lot of the orchids sold these days comes in sphagnum moss. I guess it's a lightweight material and makes shipping very inexpensive. The problem with sphagnum is that for beginners, it's very hard to water correctly. It's either too dry or it's too wet. And usually it's too wet. And if it gets too wet, you guessed it, the roots start to die. So if I get an orchid and it's in sphagnum, I let it flower, and when the flowers are finished, I repot right away, because I really don't like growing in sphagnum. And fourth, there's a final reason for repotting, which is a bit of an odd one, but I got this plant as a gift just before Christmas. You can see it still has Christmas ornaments all over it. And this is a bit unusual in that this pot has no holes in it. An orchid like this is almost doomed to die. So I've been watering it very carefully while I enjoy the flowers over Christmas. And now it's time to get out of this pot. Now this is a Phalaenopsis, or if you want to use a short term, it's called a fowl, or a moth orchid. And it's a good choice for a beginner orchid grower. It flowers a very long time. It likes the temperatures inside the house and it can get by with lower light levels. So this is actually a great house plant. Now normally what I would do if I'm repotting this orchid, I would cut the flower stem off. These flowers are almost finished, they're starting to get brown, and I would cut that off and make potting easier. But I want to take this to a friend in a couple of days and I want them to see the flowers on it. So I'm going to try to repot this with the flowers intact see how that goes. I don't usually do that. So step one is to get rid of all of this Christmas junk. Sometimes 
especially after two years, this orchid is a bit tight in here. And that's one of the reasons I like plastic pots is I can kind of give them a squeeze and that kind of pops the roots off. Um, but if it hasn't been in here too long, they usually come out fairly easily. I grab the plant by the neck and just wiggle it a bit until it comes out. And this is coming out actually very nicely. And you can see all the nice roots here. And inside we've got lots of bark. So now I just work my fingers through it very gently. Well, not so gently. Orchids are actually really tough plants. Everybody's afraid of them. And once you get used to them, you know you can be a bit brutal with them. This isn't going to hurt them. But I want to get all that bark out. Even the ones that are stuck to the roots, I try to pry off. Now, if it's really stuck, I'll leave it. A few pieces won't kill the plant. But as much as possible, all the old stuff should come out. And another piece there, another piece there. That one's a little tougher. There we go. All right. So now all the old material is out. The next thing I do is have a close look at the roots and see if we have to do anything to modify those roots. So let's have a closer look at uh, the roots here. You might notice that the roots down here are nice and green, nice light green, and the ones up higher are gray. Well, that's pretty normal. The ones in here were farther inside the pot, and they've absorbed water, and because they've absorbed water, they look green. When they're in the air, they tend to look gray like this. So those are all good roots. We don't have to worry about that. Now here's a root that looks a little flat. These are all nice and round, and this part is flat, and you can see it's been broken here. Once it's like this, it's just going to rot. In fact, look at that, I can pull it right off. This is really interesting here. So what you see here is the actual orchid root. The big thing that was around it is something called velamen. And it's a spongy material that absorbs water. But this is the real root. So this isn't going to do the plant any good, and I just cut that off. And you might be able to see the cut part here is nice and fleshy and green. So that's good. Here's another piece that's broken here, and we might as well get rid of that. Here's a little root here, we can cut that off. And so I go through the plant and just get rid of anything that looks old and is rotten or starting to go. These, actually, these roots actually look pretty good. Sometimes by the time you repot, there's a lot of old stuff in here. Have a look at the other side. Now here's a funny looking root. You can see the tip of it looks fairly normal here, or, or the upper part looks fairly normal, and then it kind of gets all shriveled like this. Well, this end is dead, so we might as well just cut that off too. Another old piece down here. Get rid of that. Here we have a root that looks like it's starting to do some rotting in here. Okay, and it's broken here. So we'll get rid of that too. Uh, here's another one that doesn't look very good right in here, although the bottom part is still green. Okay, so this root might actually still be doing the plant some good. And if I had a plant with very few roots, I would leave that. But this plant actually has lots of good roots, so we'll just get rid of that too. Here's another dry, dry tip. Get rid of that. If you don't get rid of these, they're just going to rot in the pot anyways. So it's better to take those off. Now if you have a look in here, you see an old leaf. You can take that off. All right, the rest of this looks pretty good. Those are all good looking roots. 
Uh, there's a few spots here and there, uh, but I would leave those. It's not serious. This one I think I'll cut back to here where there's another break here. And that's it. This orchid is ready for repotting. All right, it's time to repot this orchid. There are a couple more things we need to talk about. The first one is the pot. Traditionally, orchids have been put into clay pots, and they work quite well in a greenhouse where it's very humid. But in the home on a windowsill, it's much drier, and I much prefer the plastic pots for home use. Some people will put extra holes in the side, but again, that's not necessary in a dry home. This has lots of holes, some on the side. I just use the pot as is. We don't use soil for potting up orchids. We use something that's much coarser. I like to use this. This is called coconut husk, and it's made from the outer shell of a coconut, which is broken up into smaller pieces. And this holds a good amount of water, but is very airy and works really well. You can also use bark. The problem with bark is that it's hard to find now and it's really expensive. And although it works just as well, it's much easier to use the cocoa husk. When you go and buy some orchid potting soil or potting medium, you'll notice that a lot of it comes in white plastic bags. The problem with those is that you can't see what you're getting inside. And you might be getting some good spark or you could be getting soil. So I never buy it that way. I, use, I want to buy clear bags where I can see what I'm getting. The last thing I have to do is to figure out what size of pot do I want for my orchid. And you can see that if I put this orchid in here, it seems to be like a, a fairly good fit. There's some movement, but the roots more or less fill this space. So this is a good size. If you have a small orchid that's uh, in a pot this big, you don't want to go to six inches right away. Move up to a pot that's a little bigger and use that first. All right, so the first thing I do is I put some medium in the bottom of the pot. Then I set my plant in the center of the pot, push it down a little bit, and now hold it in place with one hand and use the other hand to pack bark around the outside. And I like to try to get all my roots inside the pot. Even if they were growing outside before, I move them inside because they'll get more moisture and water that way. Use your fingers to pack it in. Don't pack too hard, but fairly firm. Try to fill all those holes in there. And give it a bit of a shake, that works too. Turn it around, do the other side, and then lift up these leaves and make sure that you're getting it underneath the leaves. That's starting to look pretty good. A little more on this side. Now this plant had a lot of roots and so it's pretty sturdy in there. But if your plant had less roots it might be quite wiggly and that's not good for growing the new roots. So one thing you can do is use one of these rhizome clips, which is specially designed for orchids. And I usually place it either over some roots, or in this case, since I have a flower spike, I'll put it right onto the flower spike. That way I won't damage any of the leaves. And you just put this on and press it down. And this just pushes the orchid in a little bit and keeps it a little sturdier. Now, if you want to know how to make these clips, I have a separate video that shows you how to do that. The only thing left to do with this orchid now is to water it. And I have a separate video on how to water orchids. 
This orchid is now set and can grow like this for two years until it's time to repot again.